Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll and like and subscribe for more respect next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Archer from Fate Zero, otherwise known as Gilgamesh. It's only a spoiler inside the show. In the future, when requesting Fate characters, please just name them. Otherwise, it gets so confusing for me. I'm not even sure if this is the Archer people kept shouting for in the comments. Hopefully it was. If not, too bad. Gilgamesh is God of Kings. It doesn't get much better than that. What if God was one of us? Just a slob like one of us. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need the Gates of Babylon, which means the ability to conjure weapons from your treasure vault that vary from big shiny arrows to apocalyptic barrages of big shiny arrows. Next, we need to be able to wear shiny golden armor, subtly flexing on everyone with their pedestrian steel. Finally, we need to be able to straight up shut down other people's noble phantasm. They're just wasting our time by not surrendering anyway. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, but strength and charisma have to be high. Strength will be number one you like your armor heavy so we need that at 15 as soon as possible charisma after that you get summoned by someone then convince someone else to kill that guy so you become their assistant instead now that is a spoiler and high charisma constitution next i'm gonna level with you we're not gonna get a lot of hp from our class but you can hold your own with the more melee focused servants follow that up with intelligence you're not a fool it's not like you challenge yourself to a fight dexterity is a little on the low end we just don't really need it for anything and we'll dump wisdom if pride comes before before the fall you're looking like september 21st it's the last day of summer because you're really proud for race you're not a half god your dad was a half god and your mother was a full goddess that's three quarters god so we need some celestial flavor scourge asimar are the best for celestial kids who don't play well with others you get plus two charisma and plus one constitution 60 feet of dark vision celestial resistance to resist necrotic and radiant damage the light bearer cantrip for the light spell because your armor isn't shiny enough and healing hands to restore hit points equal to your total level to a creature named gilgamesh that you touch as an action for your background nobles get history and persuasion proficiency because they're better than you and they know it kick things off as a paladin we won't be here long but you get heavy armor proficiency and you don't get it if you multi-class in here later you can also scoop up athletics and intimidation proficiency because you're strong and pretty scary when you want to be first level paladins get divine sense letting you detect any celestials fiends or undead within 60 feet of you which should stop the other servants from sneaking up on you you get lay on hands giving you a pool of healing equal to five times your paladin level that you can distribute to characters named gilgamesh and i guess Yes, Enki do. Second level paladins get a fighting style, and we're not actually an archer, so we won't be using standard weapons for offense all that often. Go for defense, which will give you plus one to your AC while you're wearing armor, which with full plate will give you 19. If you've got the money for it, which, um... Yeah, you do. You can also cast some Paladin spells, but forget that. We're here for Smites, which lets you add an extra 2d8 radiant damage to melee attacks with a spell slot and an extra d8 to fiends and undead. Are servants technically undead? I'd say so, because it helps us. Especially when we're cheating to get spell slots faster. It's not actually cheating, it's perfectly legal to switch to sorcerer, and your soul sure is divine. Divine soul sorcerers are favored by the gods, letting you add 2d4 to a failed saving throw or attack roll once per short rest. You can also learn cleric spells, which will help us get our radiant thing going. For cantrips, there's sacred flame, which forces a dexterity saving throw on one creature, dealing 1d8 radiant damage if they fail. And you don't have to worry about cover, just open the portal up right behind them. Word of Radiance forces a constitution saving throw on creatures within five feet of you dealing 1d6 radiant damage to anyone who dares approach you sorry wrong golden anime villain guidance and resistance give creatures a d4 for ability checks or saving throws respectively making you a little bit better at everything you do for first level spells guiding bolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 4d6 radiant damage and gives the next person to attack the target advantage on their hit hit him with a big glowing arrow who could have guessed that would make them easier to hit? But why take Sorcerer if you're not taking any Sorcerer spells? So, Shield adds 5 to your AC as a reaction, getting hit is bad, don't do it. Since you're hitting total level 3, you get Radiant Consumption as a Scourge Asimar. That lets you add your level in Radiant Damage for 1 attack per round, and deal half your level in Radiant Damage to creatures within 10 feet of you for a minute per long rest, basically putting the power of God and anime on your side. Ah. Second level sorcerers get a font of magic full of sorcery points you can use to recover spell 
slots or do cool stuff with thanks to the fancy new class feature variants unearthed arcana viewing touch lets you make a weapon magical for a minute empowered reserves gives you advantage on one skill check and sorcerer's fortitude gives you a d4 of temporary hp for every sorcery point you spend considering you're rocking a d6 for your extra hp on level up don't sleep on this one it's pretty useful for this level spell comprehend languages lets you understand all spoken and written languages for an hour pretty useful when you're going on a space road trip third level sorcerers get meta magic you can use to augment your spells twin spell lets you cast a spell that would normally target one person and hit someone else with it as well costing an amount of points equal to the spell's level letting you shoot two guiding bolts at the same time empowered spell lets you re-roll an amount of damage die equal to your charisma modifier by spending one sorcery point which can be helpful if you're rolling as poorly as i do for this level spell spiritual weapon summons a floating spectral weapon that you can move and make a melee spell attack with that deals 1d8 force damage as a bonus action on your turns no concentration required so you don't have to worry about getting hit well not any more than you normally would anyway fourth level sorcerers get an ability score improvement more charisma will make your spells more godly i'd go for that for this level spell hold person forces a wisdom saving throw on a humanoid failing that they're paralyzed for up to a minute depending on your concentration and whether or not they can make the saving throw on their turns this pairs really well with your divine smites as melee attacks automatically crit a paralyzed target and you get to double all those smite die on a crit this will let you hold down a very good boy who really deserved the grail and will ruin the series when you kill them fifth level sorcerers can learn third level spells fly gives a creature you touch a flying speed of 60 feet for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration you don't need a big flying spaceship to fly but hey if your dm's cool with it that would be pretty cool sixth level divine soul sorcerers get empowered healing but that doesn't really matter for you because none of your methods of healing actually involve rolling you just get to pick how much health you or anyone else gets because you're the master of the universe for this level spell dispel magic shuts down spells of third level or lower and higher level spells with a check using your spell casting modifier of 10 plus the spells level that you're shutting down other noble phantasms are so passe they're not even made of gold why would they even try Seventh level sorcerers can cast fourth level spells. Dimension door lets you teleport up to 500 feet away as an action, and you can bring a buddy if you think the fight really isn't worth your time, or if someone uses a command seal to make you act like a coward. Eighth level sorcerers get another ability score improvement. Cap off that charisma. Your persuasion is good enough to turn a priest into a serial killer. That's pretty good. For this level spell, death ward makes a creature immune to death for eight hours once after that they can die but this pairs really well with your healing hands and lay on hands letting you ignore death then get yourself back up to a healthy amount to hit an enemy with a little no you energy ninth level sorcerers can learn fifth level spells flame strike forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius cylinder that is 40 feet high failing that they take 4d6 fire damage and 4d6 radiant damage as you hit them with the wrath of the use 10th level sorcerers can learn another meta magic option quicken spell lets you cast spells that normally take an action as a bonus action for a little within the rules maneuvering divine smites aren't spells so you could quicken a hold person then pop a fourth level divine smite since you can't cast a smite at a higher level anyway of course if you can hold a scander you can also hold just about anything so hold monster is like hold person without the humanoid restriction you could have handled bluebeard's monster if berserker wasn't being such a buzzkill 11th level sorcerers can cast 6th level spells. Sunbeam shoots a 60 foot line of radiant energy, forcing constitution saving throws on creatures in that line. Failing that, they take 6d8 radiant damage and are blinded, half as much damage, and no blinding if they succeed. Oozes and undead have disadvantage, and that light counts as sunlight, so vampires are not going to like this. I know a certain lancer who fits the bill. You can fire these beams every round for a minute, depending on your concentration. 12th level sorcerers get another ability score improvement, bump up your constitution it's really important with your low hit die from sorcerer remember bumping your con modifier bumps your hp retroactively so it's plus 14 here rather than plus one 13th level sorcerers get 7th level spells. Plane shift lets you and up to 8 friends bamf to another plane, or lets you send an enemy on a tour of the universe like you took back in the day. You make a melee spell attack against them, then they make a charisma saving throw against your spell DC. If both of those work out in your favor, they go to a plane of your choice and it's their job to get back. You can't be expected to do everything for them. 14th level divine soul sorcerers get angelic form, letting you summon a set of wings as a bonus action that lasts until you dispel them, giving you a flying speed of 30 30 feet per round, so now you can fly and sunbeam at the same time for some serious deity energy. 
15th level sorcerers can learn 8th level spells, and Radiant Energy sure does have a nice Wrath of God energy to it, but you know what else really has that? Natural Disasters. Earthquake turns a 100 foot radius circle into difficult terrain. Creatures in that area that are concentrating on spells have to make a concentration save. All creatures have to make a dexterity save or be knocked prone. There's also 1d6 fissures that are opened up where the DM decides. Each fissure is 1d10 times 10 feet deep, 10 feet wide, and cuts across the 100 foot radius circle. If it opens up underneath a creature, they have to make a dexterity saving throw or fall inside, and buildings above them collapse. Oh yeah, we're not done yet. Creature within half the distance of a building's height have to make a dexterity saving throw or take 5d8 bludgeoning damage. They're not prone and are buried until they make a DC 20 athletics check. Remember, you can fly, so up and up the ground and watch all the poor ground-locked chumps deal with the chaos. 16th level sorcerers get our last ability score improvement. Investing in constitution will make you as bulky as the other servants and help you with concentration checks for things like old person or monster, earthquake, and sunbeam. You don't have a ton of high level spell slots, make sure you're getting the most out of them. 17th level sorcerers can learn 9th level spells, and this will give us our gates of Babylon, raining down the most damage possible with a little buddy I like to call Meteor Swarm, which is good because that's what the player's handbook calls it too. This forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in 4 40 foot radius spheres, dealing 20 d6 bludgeoning damage and 20 d6 fire damage to those that fail. Ideally, it wouldn't be fire, but we can't be picky. Or can we? With the elemental spell metamagic ability from the new class feature variant on Earth Arcana, you can switch that fire damage to something more fitting, like lightning or thunder, by spending one sorcery point. I'd say those damage types are also less commonly resisted, which should make sure that your foes will taste the full wrath of your noble phantasm. Our capstone is the 18th level of Divine Soul Sorcerer for unearthly recovery, keeping you in the fight longer, letting you recover half your HP as a bonus action when you have less than half your HP left once per long rest, meaning that you're in it for the long haul. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you can dish out some serious magical damage. Meteor Swarm is the baddest spell in the book, and Earthquake, Sunbeam, and Guiding Bolt are also pretty great options. You also get to ignore the biggest issue of Sorcerer, which is squishiness. You've got over 150 HP and 19 AC, so people thinking you're going to be a squishy caster are in for a rough surprise. Finally, mobility is fun, and you don't have to mess around on the ground like a lowly peasant. Flying at will and flying faster when you're willing to drop a third level spell slot. For weaknesses, I'm gonna be honest, there aren't a lot. Your wisdom's bad, and those are some pretty common saving throws. Same with your dexterity, and those are also common saving throws. Finally, while Meteor Swarm can bring the hurt, monks, rogues, or anything else with evasion, just get to ignore it with a solid dexterity saving throw. So hit them with a sunbeam, or a building, or anything else you've got tucked away in your gates. This is one of the strongest builds we've made, just stay above everyone else metaphorically and literally while you call down huge bolts of treasure. Just remember, being king of the mountain puts a target on your back. Someone might have to come along to check your pride. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two builds every week. We got another redemption poll today. Vote for Green Arrow, Ben 10, Snake Eyes, or Spike Spiegel. And come back on Thursday for an artist in residence.